Welcome back to Carnades.org. Today we're going to be continuing with our series Six Months of Set Theory and Higher Order Logic. In this video we're going to be looking at Axiom of the Null Set, also known as A3. So far, the universe could be empty. The universe could be the null set, or if it was, it would be the null class. The null set itself is vacuously transitive and vacuously swelled because the antecedent of either conditional would always be false for the empty set, making the whole statement true, since they never have any elements to have elements or subsets. Because there are no elements in the null set, of course, vacuously, all of the elements of the elements of the null set are also elements of the null set, because there's no elements to begin with. And similarly, vacuously, since there are no elements of the null set, there are no subclasses of the elements of the null set, to be members of the null set. So it's super complete. So far, it could just be the null class and nothing else. No sets exist right now. We could have a universe with no sets. With just the two axioms, we can't show that the universal class is V is not empty. Note, this is very different from proving that it is empty. We're not saying we can prove solidly with these two axioms that the universal class is identical to the empty class, end of story. No, we're saying that we can't disprove it, if that makes sense. Now, this is a little bit of a gray area, and this is something that's difficult, and this is something that gets a little bit into Gödel's incompleteness theorems and all that, of how much can you prove within a certain language or a certain set of axioms. Basically, right now, our axioms are very weak. We only have a couple axioms, and so we can't prove very much. There might be true facts about the world or false facts about the world that we can't necessarily prove with the axioms we have. We have to add more to be able to prove more about the sets that exist. So, in order to do that, we need to show that, or we need to get an axiom that says that the universal class is not the null set. What's a good way to do that? Well... We're going to say that the null class is a set. The empty class is a set. So in order to fix this, we need to add another axiom, which claims that the empty set is an element of V. From this, we can see that V cannot be empty for several reasons. First, we have shown that V is not a set. If the null class is a set by being a member of V, then V can't be the null class. Because the null class isn't just a class, it's a set as well and V has to be a class, but not a set. Second, since the null set has no members, not even itself, and the null set is a member of V, then V can't be the null set, since it has at least one member, namely the null set. So the axiom is simply that the set with no members is a member of the universal class, or in other words, the empty class is a set, or very simply, the null class is a member of the universal class. Hopefully that's a simple enough axiom for you. Like I said, it hopefully is the easiest of all the axioms we've got. Proofs, this is just going to be axiom 3 or A3. Up next, we're going to start going back into some proofs before we do the fourth axiom that we're going to look at this month. In the next proof, we're going to look at the question, is the null set a subset of all sets? This is something we talked about a lot when we were talking about swelled sets and classes, but... The question now comes, can we prove it? With these axioms that we have, can we show that the null set is a subset of all sets? Watch this video and more here at carneades.org and watch a new video every single day, all of the month of October. And stay skeptical, everybody.